This is the final video for our cat pat phase one and we just want to look at the final touches making sure that we've got everything done before we submit our phase one. So let's go and check that we've got everything for our cat pat phase one. At the end of the phase one section of your PAT document, you'll have a nice little checklist. Let's make sure that we've got everything. So we're going to be submitting our phase one subfolder. If you remember, we created three folders in our PAT folder, the phase one, the phase two, the phase three. Inside of that phase one, we should have a report folder and a sources folder. In your report folder, you're going to have your phase one report, a single report using a word processing program that includes the following. So do we have a cover page? If you remember, we did do our cover page. Just a quick reminder, your abstract. We didn't do the abstract right at the beginning when we did do the cover page. We inserted our focus question there afterwards. So make sure that you've got your focus question or a suitable abstract on your cover page. Make sure that you've got your name, your school, your title, your grade, your topic. So as you can see, your name, your school, your subject, the pad topic. Then do you have the following headings? Well, if we scroll down, you can see our table of contents that we've got those headings over there that we created because we might have made changes. For example, we did change our appendix B. It might be a good idea to click over there and update the field and update the entire table. And there you can see the headings have been added and you can see that we've got our titles over there. So that is done. Your task definition and focus question are under the appropriate headings. We spoke about your task definition. You should have four paragraphs for each of those four questions that we discussed. Mine's obviously incomplete, so I'm not going to get the marks, but you will have written paragraphs following the instructions that we gave from our task definition video. And our focus question, you would have done the same. A single sentence that meets all the requirements under your focus question heading. An appendix with a diagram or screenshot of your focus phase one. If I scroll all the way down to my appendices, there's my appendix A. We created a smart art of the folder structure. Mine is again incomplete. Yours shouldn't look like this. You should be complete because remember over here you need your report and your sources, your phase two. Go watch the video that tells you how to set up your folder structure for that. Make sure that it is accurate and correct. Then an appendix with the questions and sources table. That is our appendix B. Do we have 10 questions covering three categories of question types? So do you have all 10 questions filled out? Don't leave any blanks. Make sure that it's filled out. There are marks for that. Make sure that you have at least three different levels of questions. Levels one, level two, and three and four. Make sure that you've got at least three categories. Group your questions according to themes. Make sure that there are at least three themes of questions amongst you. You might have four questions on one theme, four on another, and then two on a third one. But as long as they are grouped according to particular themes, the sources for each question from two websites, at least one other. I think they are referring that to your sources to make sure that you've got a copy of, for example, your two websites and a copy of your other source, whether that's a transcript of the text from the video or another PDF of the web article or a scanned copy of the book or article that you found that's physical, appropriate biographical data for each question. So you've got all of that filled out for each question. Remembering some of your questions are going to get answers from the same source. So for example, question one and question five might get their answers from the same source. So then you might have to copy and paste. And obviously this is going to be duplicated from here because it's the same source. An assessment of the quality of the source for each question. That is our filled out, our authority, our currency, our accuracy, our objectivity, our coverage. Make sure they're all filled out for each of them. Again, if you are using this source for question one and for example, question five, then you will just have to copy this information and paste it for question five because it's coming from the same source. Do you have a summary of the content of those questions, either in the table or in separate files with a hyperlink? So either you've got a hyperlink to the data or you've actually written out the summary. Please take note that with this one, even though you might be using the same source in question one and question five, your summaries in this case will be different because the summary over here is answering question one and the summary over here is answering question five. So make sure that you filled out those details, whether it's in separate documents or in the summary column and an appendix with the declaration of authenticity.
If you scroll down to your last appendix, you should have something like this where you can fill in the details, for example, whatever the year is, fill out your details, who helped you, so on. And then you can go and use paint to sign over here. You can use an image editor or paint or scan in your signature and then paste it over here as an image. A reminder, you can get a copy of this if you've downloaded my pat guide at tinyurl.com slash mrlongpatguide cat and if you go to the very last page there'll be a link to this layout so you can just copy and paste it over here that will be fine so that you've got the layouts all correct that you can tick and so on so there we go we've got all of those things if you've ticked out all of those things before you go further just i would recommend going through your folders and making sure that the names are all nicely laid out that they are clear names i would maybe change for example this to website source one so it's very clear that we can see that it's website source one, article source three, for example. Make sure you, that if you've got question summaries, that you've got question one summary, question two summary, and so on. This is our video source three. So we're going to save it like that. And I'll remind you about that sources list, which you can leave here as a way to refer to later. Make sure that your folders are named nicely and that your report is named nicely. And then you are ready to submit. Just also a reminder to use the style guide in this document that's in appendix B of this document which is over here about what you must have in your cover page, the heading sizes and styles. So you might want to go edit your headings, your heading ones and heading twos, your paragraph formatting. You can go and change that using the style guide if you need to. And then this part over here, we need to copy our report and put it in the relevant folder for phase two. So we're going to copy our report. Once we're happy with it, go to your phase two folder. And because we don't have a folder for it, I'm going to create a new one for the report. And I'm going to paste it in there as a copy. I'm not going to drag it. I'm just going to paste it because if you drag it, it's going to move it. So because I've added another folder, you should probably come to your Appendix A and just update this if you need to. The reason why we've got the report in the phase two is because once we've done our survey and our database and spreadsheets, we're going to take our chart and put them into the report in this phase. There's no technical marks for it in the phase two, but it is a step that they want you to do. So I would recommend that you do that as well. Have you got electronic copies of everything? I think we do. We've got everything we need. Our phase one is all done. What I would, again, make sure that we do, once we have done, make a copy of your pad folder, go into your backup folder, which I asked you to create, go paste it, and then rename it as phase one submit. So now you've got a backup copy of it. If something goes wrong with your original, you can go back and say, okay, everything I did up until my phase one was complete in case something goes wrong. And then make a copy of this on another flash drive and on another person's computer. Just so that if something goes wrong, you've got copies. And then I think you are ready, CAT students. You can now submit everything. Let's go just do a final check of the rubric. Everything from the previous videos have been covered, but let's just look over here at the last bit. Do we have a single report? Yes. Do we have those headings? Yes. Do we have an appendix with a screenshot? Yes. Do we have evidence of our sources? We now have all four of those. I think we didn't have all four when we started it because we did some of these, but now that we have completed the phase one, we've got all four. We're going to clearly get four marks and therefore we are on the way to getting a really good mark for our phase one, which is laying the foundation for a really good mark for our pet. So well done, CAT students. Make sure that you follow those instructions. If you missed anything, make sure you go back to your previous video. They are all in the video description. Click on the links for the video that you might be missing or aspect that you might need to go back to. Make sure that you've got it all done and then you can submit your phase one. All the videos we mentioned in this video series can be found if you go to our YouTube channel at Miss Long IT and Cat and click on the playlist tab. You'll find everything you need there, but it'll be useful if you are a subscriber. So make sure you click on the subscribe button and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.